Hello, I'm the Wacky Musician, and welcome to another Make and Play paper series. Today we're going to make and play a paper xylophone. Though since xylo means wood, to say a paper xylophone is like a complete contradiction, but we're going to do it anyways. To get started, you'll need a base. I'm using cardboard. I've actually got uh, three, th three, yeah, three thin sheets of cardboard taped together, and I'm going to fold in half to make a nice thick base. And then I've got a t-shirt that's going to go over the cardboard. Scissors, you will definitely need scissors. Hello. Some sort of string. I've got yarn here and scotch tape. Now first I'm going to prepare the base. I'm going to take my shirt. You can use, actually it doesn't have to be a shirt, it can be any cloth. And I'm just going to wrap it around my base, my cardboard here. This is where I'm going to attach my block and steel pieces. And to keep it there, I'm just going to tie some string around it. I'll put the string under, and I'll wrap it around here, and just tie it to hold the shirt in place. Nice and tight. A good knot here. Yeah, starting to slip. And then I'm going to wrap it around the other way. So we got it held on there really good. So basically I've got a window square, set of squares, and I'm done here. Cut it. And I use this extra strand to tie it on. This, again, this is just to hold the cloth onto the cardboard. This way we don't have to do anything that damages the cloth. So if I want to wear that shirt again, I still can. Just cut off the extra string. I'm going to use a lot of string and a lot of paper today, so you should be prepared for that. Uh, I'm using scrap paper like I did last time. These are misprints from my printer. We're just going to set our base aside for right now and go to our scrap paper here. I'm going to take four sheets. What we're going to make right now are essentially our mallets or drumsticks. Four sheets because we want them nice and thick. And we're going to roll them very, very tight. So at first I'm just going to pinch over a tiny bit of the paper, just a little fold there, and I'm going to fold it again on top of that. Uh, just little tiny folds. And then with that, I can start actually rolling. And I'll keep the roll as tight as possible. Roll it really tight. Right. Until we have a very thin round tube. Now we're going to take our scotch tape, and we're going to tape that closed, keeping it tight. Tape it in multiple spots so it stays nice and tight. And when I say multiple, I really mean multiple. I'm going to put it all over the place. Make sure it's nicely tight round. So there's our first mallet, or we can call it a drumstick if you want. So typically xylophones are played with mallets, so mallet's a better name in this case. You see it will bounce some. Now we generally would play with two mallets, so I'm going to make another one just like this, exactly the same, real tiny fold, real tight circle. So now we have two mallets. All right, set those aside. Let's start working on our tubes. I'm going to take three sheets, and we're going to roll it. It doesn't need to be nearly as tight, just a nice roll. A, not too big an opening, but not too small an opening. Or a good, perfect, about quarter size. I mean, the size of a quarter, the American coin quarter there opening. Let's put a little tape in the middle to hold it closed and seal it well. Uh, I can tape up the seam pretty good here. I found that if it's loose, you get a papery sound sometimes if that seam isn't well sealed. So now we have tape across where the paper meets the paper, so it's nice and sealed. And then this, we're going to tie the string around the end. Technically, the purpose of tying the string around the end would be to hold the paper together, but since we taped it, the string around the end here really isn't doing anything, so it's basically for looks. It looks neat. <laughs> so we're going to tie on that side and cut off the extra, and we're going to tie a loop on this side. Again, I say, since we taped it closed, the string really isn't doing anything. It's totally for looks. But both sides now have string tied around them. So it looks like this. This is our first tube. So let's do our next two. Let's take three more sheets of paper. Once again, roll them. Notice we're rolling them long ways, so we want to get as much paper around the tube as possible. That's why we're rolling them down the long ways, using the width, I'm not saying that, but we're using the eight and a half as the width of the tube, using the 11 and a half part to roll, just to clarify that. We're going to be doing a lot of this today, rolling tubes. <laughs> again, just about a quarter size on the edge there. Like a little bigger. You can always loosen your fingers to let it slide open a little bit if it's too tight. And then take the seam across. Once again, we've got the seam completely taped down. And once again, we're going to put string, tie string around the ends. And once again, this is totally really for looks. The string's not really doing anything. So uh, if you want to, you can leave it off. You will still need string, though, later on. So once again, we have a nice tube here. These tubes, of course, they're the same size. And because they're the same size, they're going to make very much the same pitch. That's not really what we want, so we need to do something to make the pitch different. And what we're going to do, we're going to work in fractions here with halves. We're going to take the one we just rolled, and we're going to cut it in half. So you can measure it if you want to be precise. I'm just eyeing it. Now that's about a half, so I'm going to cut off half of it. There we go. It's running away. So now I have a little tiny tube. This should make a much higher pitch than my big tube. So now we need to roll another tube, just like we started with the others. We're going to roll exactly the same. I'm going to do this several times. Three sheets of paper. This is, by the way, 8.5 by 11 printer paper. It's about 20 pound weight. Uh, 
if it's thicker, as I always say, higher quality and thicker papers tend to do the best. Um, in this case, uh, th actually thinner, but quality papers that are wrapped a lot seem to work best for sound. So I contradicted myself with that statement. All right, put our tape on. Let's tie our pointless string, purposeless string on. String that serves no purpose. All right, now we have another tube that was just like the first tube. Now we need to cut it to get a different pitch. We're going to take our half tube here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take from that, where that tube ends, to the top, and we're going to cut halfway through that. So we're doing half of a half, a little fraction stuff here. Half of a half, which, by the way, it's a fourth, of course. So we're cutting a fourth off. Again, you can measure it if you want. I'm just eyeballing it. I don't know how much precision accuracy will make a difference. All right, so now we have a tube of another length. So we have three length tubes right at the moment. Let's do another. Now we have a fourth tube, and we're going to follow the same formula. We're going to take our tube from last time and put it up to it. Let my string out of the way. And with what's left here, we're going to take from where this tube stops to the end and cut that amount in half, which would be a half of a half of a half, or for mathematic people, one eighth. Again, you can measure it exact if you want, but I'm just going to eyeball it. And that's our fourth tube. So we now have four different size tubes. Let's roll another one. So now we have a fifth tube. Let's take our last tube we used, put it up to it. We've got this little spot here from the end of that tube to the top of our new tube. And once again, we're going to cut that little area in half. So half of a half of a half of a half of a half. That plus count of how many halves. But mathematically, it should be 1 16th. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it from here to the top, halfway. Sniff the tip. And that'll give us our fifth tube. Let's do another. Now we have our sixth tube, so I want to go and make one in between these two sizes. This is the second to smallest one. I'm going to put it up here, and I'm going to put the smallest one next to it. And what I want to do with this tube is cut it halfway from this tube. So we're doing the opposite. We're going to take this tube here, from here to here, and we're going to cut halfway on our new tube from there. So it's going to be right about there. Can't tell you the fraction. If you want to go back and figure out what that was and do all the math, feel free. <laughs> So now that's a smaller tube than that, so it's in between, and that's what we need to get an in-between size there. So we now have six tubes. I think that's how many we're going to use today. You can always make more if you want of different sizes. Experiment to see what kind of pitches you get. And now it's time to attach them to our base. And of course, your base can be a variety of things. It could be a piece of wood. It could be some cardboard like mine. I wrapped some cloth around it to make a nice cushion. Uh, that's not even really necessary. You don't necessarily need the cloth. It just looks nicer, but <laughs> you can experiment with that. Uh, what we're going to do now is tie these onto our base. Now I'm going to start with the biggest one. We're going to take our string and we're going to drop it down the tube so it comes out the other side and then pull it through. And then we're going to wrap it around the bottom of the base. And then we're going to tie it on really tight, as tight as we can. Yeah, I'm making lots of extra knots. Make sure it doesn't slip. This yarn isn't the greatest for making knots. That should hold it. I'm going to cut off the, little, the extra here and release it from the roll. So we have one now attached. Now we need to take the one of the next size, just one size smaller than what we're at, which would be the next bigger one that's not tied on, and do the same thing. Drop the string through, and then wrap it around your base and tie it on the end. Leave enough room so that your pieces are not touching each other. Because you can also adjust them some after you've put them on, because you'll be able to slide the string over a little. So now we have two. You can see we have two. Take the next biggest size and do the same thing. Actually repeat this for all the tubes until they're all attached. Again, make sure they're not touching each other.
One more. We have our six tubes onto our base, but we're not done yet. We got one more set of pieces to put on. Let's grab some more paper. And we're gonna take now, we're gonna make some rails to put these on. We're gonna take four sheets of paper, and just like we did for the mallets, we're gonna roll them as tight as we can. We're gonna start by bending over the edge, very tiny amount, and then bend it again. Very, very tight. We are bending on the long edge for these, not the short edge like on the rolls. And then from that, you can roll a real tight roll, keeping it absolutely as tight as possible. Tape it closed before it can unravel. And I'm going to put some extra tape to hold it well. Make sure it doesn't interfere with any of our plane. Okay, so I sealed that up. Real tight tube, absolutely as tight as possible. That'll be our first rail. What we need to do now is make one exactly like it. Repeat the process. Four pages, roll it as tight as humanly possible. Unless you're an alien, then roll it as tight as alien possible. Impossible. And then tape it shut. And tape over the seal. Alright, so we have two very tight tubes, very similar to uh, the mallets we made. And these could be used as mallets, but we need them to be used as something else. What we're going to do is slide them under the tubes, and we're going to put them in a partial V like this. Probably can't see that. Let me lift this up. Like this, except they're going to be underneath the tubes. I'm going to slide them right under. We tied them tight, so we're going to have to pull up a little. It'll give. And slide them in under each tube. Center. All right, first one's in place. So we got it sliding right under here. Now let's put the second one in place. Notice we don't need anything to hold it, because the strings we already tied on the tubes will hold it down. Now we put the second one in place. All right, so both are in place. Our tubes are now lifted off the ground. Um, but you can, we'll want to experiment with rolling the tubes to find where they work best. When you're hitting your clock and spiel, as with hitting any percussion instrument, when you come down, you want to let it bounce off the instrument. Don't slam it and hold it, but pull up slightly in the wrist. So the wrist is going up like that. All right. So you lift off it and kind of let it bounce off the tube. So that's your paper clock and spiel. You can experiment with different tube lengths, see if you can get, uh, if you really want to go through it, you can see if you can get actual pitches that would line up with a major scale, so you can play actual songs, or you can play more of a random. So that's our paper xylophone, even though xylo means wood, so that doesn't make any sense. I guess it's really a chartiophone, and we could call it that, but then you wouldn't know what I was talking about. So paper, xylophone, at least you have some idea what I'm talking about. And now I'm rambling, and it's time to end. Bye!